Welcome to the March Madness Minute number 20, and today we're going to look at, at something called DocAppender. And DocAppender is an add-on in Google Forms, and what it does is when you hit submit on a Google Form, that single submission goes to the bottom of a Google Doc of your choosing. And that alone might not sound super interesting, but there's some really nice user scenarios. For example, as a teacher, I can have the Google Form be a rubric, and when I hit submit, that information goes to the bottom of the student's work. Or instead of a piece of work, if like a piece of writing that I was giving feedback on, it could just have their name at the top and be a running record that maybe I'm looking at a certain skill set throughout the year and all of those submissions would go to that one student's document keeping this running record throughout the year. And I could even have those single Google Docs shared with students or parents so that they're not seeing everything in my spreadsheet but they're seeing the information that's relevant to them. Um, you could also have a student complete a Google form, so maybe you have a presenter and student, maybe five students in the class are completing the Google form and their feedback will go to the bottom of the presenter's um, work. So it's a nice way to give feedback but then there, to individuals, but as a teacher you also have all that information in your spreadsheet. So we're going to start by going to Google Drive and we've previously made a Google Classroom and an assignment. So when I make an assignment, it automatically names the document with the student's names. And so this is the information I'm going to be using for DocAppender. And I'm going to then make a Google Form. And in that Google Form, I have a question set that says name of author and I have not completed this yet it's just a blank drop down list for right now and then uh, thanks John for letting me use your rubric but I'm looking at claims evidence and reasoning for why they chose the colony uh, did they support that information and I like this format it's multiple choice where I have the one two three and the actual uh, language you could do a grid with the one two three and then the claim claims evidence reasoning but then the student and yourself don't have that language um, to verify uh, how many points to give them. And at the end you can ask things like what did they do well, what's one thing they can continue to work on. You'll notice at the top I did choose that I want students to log in, it's actually going to require it, and I'm automatically gathering their username. That way I know when they're giving feedback to another student they're doing so as themselves, not as another student. And so this is the student work that I'm looking at, and you'll see here was the prompt, here was their feedback. I'm sorry, not their feedback, but their actual work. So now I'm going to my Google Form, Add-ons. Get Add-ons is where you'll go to get DocAppender. I've already done that, so I'm going to open my sidebar. And it's going to ask me some questions here. So it's going to ask me, so where is the work that has all of the names of the authors? So I've gone to choose my folder and I found the assignment called Pick Your Colony and I'm choosing that folder and hitting select. If you double click it's going to open to the actual submissions and that's not going to work. You need to have the actual entire folder. So it has my folder name. I'm going to click on next and you'll have to hit refresh the first time but it's asking so where do you want the file names to show up? So name of author and I'm going to save and populate. That way here when it says name of author it's already automatically pulled up all of my file names which included my student names. So we'll just go next and it's going to ask me so when you hit submit what information do you want to go to the bottom of the student's work? So um, I'm going to have the timestamp, the username so they know who's giving them the feedback and they already know their own name. I don't really need that. Claim evidence reasoning. I'm going to use that. I'm not going to use the rubric one because I want them to see the language and I want them to have those free responses. So I can save my changes and this is ready to go. So I'm going to click on live form and now I can complete this Google form. So it's automatically going to gather my name. That way they'll know this is feedback from the teacher versus feedback from a peer. Name of author so I'm going to choose this S test and here I can give them points. I'll say two for claim, two for evidence, but I want some more reasoning. So this one I'm going to skip because I didn't even choose that to go to the bottom of their page. And here's where I would give them lots of good comments 
and these ones are in Swedish, and submit. So when I hit that submit button, let's go back and look at the student work now. So here's the student work, and now they see um, the headers as well as the feedback. And I know it's a little squished, um, but the next person who submits, so if they have a student read it, that would just continue on into this table and they'd see the name of the student, see what their feedback looked like. And I did have the option, if I, if I really don't like this view, I could have it be a vertical table or a bullet point list and those were some options that I had in my actual um, Google form here. So I have some options if I don't like the way that's being displayed. So that is Doc Appender and I've seen it used um, several different ways. We've used it at the high school to give receipts to student documents so that choir can have a running total of how the balance of student accounts. Um, I've seen it used for reading records for fluency and accuracy. Um, there's there's quite a, a few user scenarios including in PE where students daily take their uh, heart rate and so that they have that log. Um, but that is Docapender and if you have any questions let me know and I can help you create one.